Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here with another KSP Fundamentals. Today we are going to tackle the easiest of the satellite contracts, and that is an equatorial orbit around Kerbin. The first thing you want to do when you accept one of these contracts is, before accepting it, go into map mode and check out the orbit and make sure it's going the direction you expect it to. Also, make sure you're looking at the at the orbit you expect. Notice I have two orbits here. One has an apoapsis of about 13, one has an apoapsis of about 8, and that's million kilometers. Or sorry, million meters, or thousand kilometers. Uh, I'm going to take the one that's apoapsis is about 8. So here we are in mission control, and other than making sure that the apoapsis is 8 million meters, which was the one that we that we were looking at in the thing, I want you to ignore all these numbers. These numbers don't mean anything. They're useless. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Note, though, that, that I'm getting a ton of money in science for these because I've, I've set myself on super easy mode just to make these tutorials easier to produce. I don't want to have to unlock anything. But you're going to get probably on a normal on a normal mode. You're probably going to get about a hundred grand or so for one of these. So making the satellite as cheap as possible while still making it pretty easy to fly is kind of important. And by cheap to fly, I basically mean the satellite itself is going to be cheap. But also we are going to do two upgrades. We're going to upgrade tracking station to level two, and we're going to upgrade mission control to level two. This will give us patched conics and the ability to create maneuver nodes in the map editor. I personally think that's the, those, these are the single two most important upgrades in the game, and anybody who's having trouble uh, playing the game and is trying to play in career to get contracts should make these two things a priority. Um, upgrading the launch pad to launch bigger rockets is useless if you can't get those rockets where you're trying to send them. This rocket is also very cheap to build technologically. It only requires one, two, three, four, five tech unlocks, and it's basically the tech unlocks that are required to get satellites. Um, the only unlock that it ha that it includes that doesn't that isn't needed for satellites is this one right here, which is going to cost you 90 science to unlock the Octo Probe. You can do this with a Stay Putnik probe. But it's a lot harder, and it's definitely not a fundamental skill. <laughs> and this is the ship that's going to send your satellite up. This ship is good enough for any of the in Kerbin Sphere of Influence satellite missions. This includes the one we're doing today. This includes any tilted or backwards orbits. This also includes any orbits around Moon or Minmus. Uh, you could probably push this guy to another location, but get comfortable doing those three types, which I'm going to be detailing here in the future before you try anything extra Kerbal. Now there's two important things about this satellite. First of all, you'll note it is four stages. The first stage is an RT-10 solid fuel booster that I have thrust limited down to 72. The reason this is thrust limited is because these solid boosters have a lot of kick to them, and it's going to get this guy way too fast, way too soon. If you remember from my getting to orbit tutorial, going too fast too soon is bad. The second one I've actually thrust limited even more, down to 59%. He actually gets up above uh, atmospheric efficiency anyway, even though it's this low, but it still uh, doesn't get it too high, and it keeps it from falling below atmospheric efficiency, which is good. Uh, the next thing is a decoupler and the LV909 liquid fuel engine. Um, these, this guy here with this fuel tank is going to basically get you into orbit. And then this here is the satellite, which is the um, Octo at the top, the Communitron, which is there just to fulfill the contract, and solar panels, which are there not only to fulfill the contract, but also to keep this guy alive while you're doing any, any motions. You could put a single solar panel on this guy and just make sure you always leave him facing the sun. I don't like doing that because I tend to be forgetful. If you're using Kerbal Engineer, you'll notice that this guy has about 6,800 uh, meters per second of delta V, which is enough to get anywhere in the Kerbal sphere of influence and get into orbit. He also has about 4,700 delta V on the bottom stages, which is more than enough to actually get into orbit around Kerbin. But I'm going to show you a trick to, to dump this into the atmosphere so that you can, uh, you can only have this in space and you don't have to do any cleanup or, or deleting of debris later. For those of you who don't have Kerbal Engineer, though, it is uh, completely not needed for this. This is a very simple rocket. There is no need to feel like uh, not having it is going to make it this harder to do. Um, this is all stock, <laughs> as everything in my fundamentals is. You can build this in stock and fly it exactly the same way I do. The only thing you need to do to launch it is to turn on SAS by hitting the T key, make sure your throttle is all the way up, and then hit the space bar. Now, it's important that you launch right around dawn. It doesn't have to be at sunrise like I have done here, but you want to launch at dawn because you're going to be going to the east, and this guy relies on solar power to survive. If he, if you try to do anything when the sun has set, this guy is going to 
not be able to do it because he is going to run out of power in seconds of trying to turn him or anything else. Oh, one more thing. One thing I forgot to mention in the VAB, there is a uh, set of reaction wheels here. And uh, this is the advanced inline stabilizer. This is very important uh, because you can't turn these guys with the torque in this probe core. Hold on a second. <laughs> while I, <laughs> while I uh, stage this guy, you cannot turn this rocket with this probe core when you need to with this guy. So I put this here simply to do your gravity turn and also to hold your stability on the way up. Now, just like in our orbit video, when you get to 10,000 meters, you're going to turn this guy to 45 degrees. And I would suggest that this solid rocket is almost gone now. So I would suggest holding it at 45 degrees until you lose the rocket here. And then stage. Make sure, again, your throttle is up to 100%. Now we can go into map mode, though. Bring up our nav ball, which I have moved to the side with enhanced nav ball. Again, it's just a nice thing for stock. It makes it, makes it so you can see the nav ball easily, and it makes it so I can see the nav ball easily. But the rest of this is just like getting into orbit uh, normally. Normally, we would just burn this up until it gets up to about 75 or so. But if you go out here, and actually I'm going to turn down time warp now, you'll notice we're almost out of fuel. That's by design of this rocket. This rocket is supposed to basically get us into orbit. And we don't want to leave it in orbit. If we went out here and circularized like we did in the going to orbit video, we would then dump this thing into orbit and then have to delete it later, which is kind of, I consider it kind of cheaty. <laughs> and also, you, uh, it, it, you don't have to go get it later if you don't want to do that. So I suggest just aiming this guy prograde and throttling it up and just keep boosting forward until we lose our thrust because we've run out of fuel in it. Now, kill the throttle again, like I just did here. Notice this is down at the bottom. Go back into regular mode, and then we're going to stage this thing away. Now, notice this guy's a little sluggish to turn, but not too bad. Uh, he's near, not nearly as sluggish as he would have been uh, when I had those solid rocket boosters installed uh, with, if I had not put a reaction wheel on there. But now... We're, we're not quite in orbit yet, but I'm not going to bother getting into orbit. Because we have this orbit here. It's going around the, the planet the same direction we're going. So instead of getting out to Apoapsis, circularizing our orbit, and doing all that junk, we don't care about that. All we want to do is get our orbit matching this one. So I'm just going to hit the, the Z key to maximize my throttle. And burn us so that we go all the way out to Apoapsis. Now, you notice we're still in the atmosphere while I'm doing this, but we're well above 60 meters or 60 kilometers. I just hit the X key really quick to, to stop that. And we're going to now kind of tweak it by using the shift key and the X key in tandem. Make sure it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, but notice we're not quite touching right here. So I'm going to bring it out just a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. Now we're above we're above atmosphere now, which is good. But even if we were in the the mid 60s, uh the the air resistance that high up isn't enough really to bring your to bring your uh apoapsis down any. Now, notice I've burned all the way out and we are ready to circularize and I don't care anything about this ascending node, apoapsis, periapsis, any of these numbers, they don't matter. All that matters is that I get my maneuver node orbit looking like the other orbit. And the first thing you want to do is you want to get it so it's roughly the same size and you use the prograde marker for that. You can also use the retrograde if you go too high, but you can also drag the prograde up and down to make it bigger and smaller. Now that they're roughly the same size, you can use the radial marker to turn your orbit left and right. And that's the important thing to, to getting these to match up, because you're never going to be perfectly on. Well, I wouldn't say never, but the chances of being perfectly on are very low. So you want to get these things so that roughly the same amount is either over or under on the left and the right, or it's exactly the same. Note it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And now the orbit from above looks really close. And now if we check here, normal, this looks really good. It's a little bit higher on this side than it is on this side, so I'm going to burn a little bit to the south. And then you basically can't tell that this orbit's not the same. It's a little bit out here. That's kind of splitting hairs, though, to be honest. The, the people giving you the satellite contract probably aren't going to care that much. 
Um, yeah, it's, it needs a little bit more on the up here, so it probably needs a little bit more this way. And you know what? I'm going to call that good, even though it's not. It's this is this is being pedantic, to be honest. <laughs> They're not going to care about this sort of thing. That's why that's why you ignore the numbers. The numbers don't matter as much as making the orbits look the same. So all you have to do is time warp yourself out. I like to hit F5 before doing any time warping because I tend to over time warp. But time warp out to about uh, probably not even 10 seconds before. This guy says 52 seconds. Don't think about that because I was burning. I was burning slower. But at about 15 seconds, see, notice it only takes five to actually do the burn, but it doesn't really matter that much. You're going to want to try to hit the burn, the maneuver node, fairly closely, though, and then hit the X when the time comes, and then, first of all, just check. See, look, we're all, we've already got it, even though we're nowhere near our maneuver node, and we're also nowhere near the orbit itself. These two check marks are checked because I already hit the orbit, so I just stopped burning. I may, just maintained stability for 10 seconds while I was talking to you, and I have just made a million credits on easy mode. <laughs> Granted, you're going to make a lot less than that, but you're still going to make far more than the six or seven or whatever it was grand that this thing cost. I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I definitely enjoyed making it for you. Stay tuned for the next episodes where I hit a non-equatorial orbit. I am also going to hit a moon orbit and a Minmus orbit. Uh, I am Fifth Horseman, and I will very soon in this series. Talk at you later.